back. Look at that. Oh my God, magic on a Monday. We'll call it Magical Mondays from now on. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome back. Welcome to our weekly, our weekly chat, our weekly interaction where we get to learn about each other, learn about English. Oh, it's just a wonderful time to be here. Uh, let's do some shout outs to everybody in the chat. Hello, Bisma. Hello, Gertrudis. Hello, Pilar. All the regulars are back. Love, love interacting with you guys. Welcome back. Yes. Uh, like the music. Yeah, the music was funky. I was kind of delaying the class because I was getting down with that music. That beat was pretty nice, pretty tight. There's some new English for you there. Hello, Beatrice. Hello, Salua. Hello, Saeed. Uh, hello, Mosen, Beatrice. Uh, awesome. Welcome. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, do to do, do so it's it's Monday so like I said let's let's go slowly let's not break anything let's let's go slowly into this whole thing that we're going to be working on today and there's a couple other things I want to chat with you guys about a cool a few new apps which might improve your day so before we do that I've given you the copy that we're going to be working on today as you know my style I appreciate that El Musawi waking up at 12 12 30 a.m. to be with us that's that's well done of you. Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so anyways, all the documents are in there. Here's what I wanted to talk to you guys today about. Uh, one thing we're going to be working on today is uh, a little bit more challenging, maybe improving your vocabulary a little bit, showing you some different combinations that are going to make you sound super awesome in English. That's one thing we're going to do. And the other thing I wanted to do is show you, where is it? Come over here. I want to show you this. This is an application which is quite useful. It's called Discord. You can see it is time to learn English, so I hope you're ready. Uh, this one's called Discord, and it's a cool little app, so I'm going to throw the link up here for you guys just so you can check it out. So here it's in the chat. Take a look at it. Go to that website. I want you to check it out. I'll show you kind of what you can do with it, but it's a cool little app for kind of keeping in touch with other students, keeping in touch with me, keeping in touch with Kareen. Uh, just keeping in touch in general and you can you can post in here it's a little mini community that you guys can join and you can see on the side that you can you can get a there's a lot of people in here already and a lot of people who are interested obviously in learning English and improving themselves there so you can see I'm in there uh, and then there's a lot of other people who are in it as well so it's a good way so when you guys are done class and you're you know maybe you guys want to keep chatting with each other uh, I'm sure you guys meet some interesting people while you're in the chat this is a good way to do it. You guys can join up in this and you can keep in touch with everybody and you can use it as, as a way of keeping in touch and interacting, practicing your English, whatever you want, or maybe setting up that vacation in Morocco, right? Maybe finding that sofa from your buddy who are you learning English with, that could be a good idea. Maybe you want to go to Morocco. Uh, I'd like to go to Morocco. So, so this is the app, it's called Discord. I would say check it out, uh, download it. It's, there's no cost to it, it's free. And you can use it as a way of keeping in touch. And you can get in touch with me. See, there's me, upper intermediate, killing it. Uh, we got Kareem's chat over here with my face on it. Not sure why that's like that. But anyways, you can do it. There's general, there's news. You can get in touch with a lot of different things. So I would say check it out. That's my advice. That's the lesson of today. Check it out. Get the app. See if you like it. And use it to interact with your buddies who you meet in Smart. And that could only be a good thing. That could only improve your life. So get it. Uh, okay, so that's that's that. Um, check that out in your free time, and you can get it for Windows, or you can get it as an app, and it's all right there. Okay, so go check out that website. That is your homework for today. Okay, uh, hello, hello, Cesar from Italy. Ah, coffee, Italy, food. You guys have great food in Italy. Sorry, losing control here. Let's go back to what we're doing, what we're focusing on today. So here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna open that document. You're gonna make a copy of it, and we're gonna talk about different ways of describing different people. And what we're really going to focus on today is we're going to focus on different types of adjectives. So first, let me jump into let me jump into the smart website and I want to show you a few of these. Okay, now you'll notice that there's a connection between all of these things. So for example, I'm just going to run I'm going to use this as a vocab so it says match these activity adjectives I can't speak to the categories below. Some of the adjectives or phrases will need to be added to more than one category. All right, so here's the first thing you're going to notice about this stuff. Look at this one here. Uh, brightly colored. Wait a second, what's going on? The link is not working. What do you mean the link's not working? I can only send it again. Let me try it one more time here. Let me backtrack, stop whatever I'm doing, and make sure that this is working. 
Do, 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 aha. Okay, now this should work. Let's try this out again. Now give me that link. All right, let's try this one more time. Try that, guys. Work on that. Hopefully that's going to do it. That should do it. I feel like it's done. Okay, so here's what we're going to look at. Let me know if there's a problem. Uh, we're going to look at a lot of uh, combinations of words. So look at this one. Brightly colored. Mm -hmm. Maybe a brightly colored t-shirt, for example. A brightly colored room. You can see that combination of brightly and colored together with the little hyphen. That's called the hyphen. Okay, another thing you look at, bumpy. Uh, bumpy. The road is bumpy. Life can be bumpy. Mondays are bumpy. Mondays right now is a bit of a struggle. I'm working through it. Curious. Monkeys. Monkeys are curious. Uh, little people are curious. Babies, toddlers, this kind of thing. Empty. Yes, sometimes m you can fill that void with other things. Sweet smelling. There we go. Nice combination. Again, noticing the hyphen there. This is some of the stuff we're going to look at today. Heavy, you know. So what do all these words have in common? Discord's not working. It's an app. Yes, it is an app. Discord is an app. Right, that is an app. Uh, so search it. If, you're, if you can't get the Discord, uh, it, it is an app. It's not, it, it's not generally a website. I'm on it as a website, but I think that it's better as an app. It's on your phone. It's a lot faster. So try, try downloading it as an app. I think it'll be easier. Okay, so looking at this stuff. So what do all these things have in common? We have brightly colored, inviting, bumpy, littered. What do, what do all those words have in common? Uh, they're all adjectives, okay? So this is exactly what we're going to be working on today, is adjectives. So let's look at a few of these ones, because these ones are good, and they connect to what we're going to be doing. You might be able to use them today. Uh, so sweet smelling, uh, flowers, heavy, rain, uh, heavy, heavy car, heavy rain, heavy stuff, inviting, uh, atmosphere, inviting person, littered, garbage, right? A littered street, a narrow street, a filthy street, a shady street, a shady individual, could be people, people can be shady as well, a restful Sunday, a smog-filled city, a speeding roadrunner, I don't know, speeding something, speeding car, tree-lined forest, tree-lined beach, peaceful day, freshly swept, freshly swept? When do you freshly sweep? Uh, skip. Freshly swept something. I don't know. I'm not sure why swept. Hurrying and rushing. A rushing river. Okay? So a lot of these speeding ticket. Thank you, Manal. Very cookies are sweet smelling. You are right, Judith. I say heavy metals. There we go. Heavy metal. Yes. Oh my God. Uh, okay. All of those work. You be quiet. Uh, okay, so all of these can work. If you guys have any questions, please throw them in there. Yes. Lady Gaga is a perfect example of wearing brightly colored clothes. Okay, so if you guys have any questions about any of that vocab, please ask me. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, no, this is, this is changing the focus. So this is what I wanted to introduce you to. We're going to look at adjectives today, and we're going to look at one-word adjectives, and we're going to look at two-word adjectives. For example, bumpy, one word, and brightly colored. Okay, so let's go into the document over here, uh, where I'm going to get you give you guys a few topics. Heavy cream, yes, they are heavy cream. Uh, okay, so let's look at this one. So here's Obama. Now I kind of like Obama. He's a, he's a nice man. And here's what I ha here's what I had to say about Obama. I said, oh, I'm gonna have to make that smaller. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that. Number one, Obama is charismatic. Uh, if you guys don't know charismatic, it's like somebody who's kind of charming, right? Like when you listen to them, you kind of want to listen to them more because they're a good talker and they have. They have some kind of energy about them, or um, I don't know, a very interesting personality. You're kind of drawn to them. Number two, I think he's well spoken. Uh, he gives good speeches. You know, he's the way he uses his voice and the and you know, just he, he's just a good public speaker. And I think he's pretty kind mannered. Uh, I think he's a kind guy. He's got a good behavior. Pretty polite. Yeah, I think you'd agree with that. Hello, Ahmed. How are you? Uh, okay, so that's what I think about Obama. You can agree or you can disagree. It don't don't matter. But this is what I decided to say about Obama. So I said a one-word adjective. He's charismatic, he's well-spoken, and he's kind-mannered. So what we're going to do is you're going to help me. And maybe you know some two-word adjectives. Maybe you don't. That's cool. You can give me a one-word adjective, no problem. Uh, we're going to describe these different people over here. We're going to describe these different people, and we're going to use one and two-word adjectives. All right, so 
let's uh, let's start with this one here. Great topic uh, because you do know this person yourself when you were younger. Uh, I would like you to uh, give me a one-word adjective. For example, I don't know, troublesome. Were you troublesome? Uh, and if you can, give me a two-word adjective. Maybe it's got a hyphen in it. Usually they do. Okay, so can you give me a one or two-word adjective to describe yourself? Okay, so if I was going to do myself, let's see. Uh, myself when I'm younger. Oh, my God. Let's see here. Myself when I was younger. One-word adjective. Troublesome. I was a troublesome teenager. Um, two-word adjective to describe myself. How would I describe myself when I was younger? Oh, wow. This, this is not easy. We might just have to go to a list and <laughs> take a look at it and then just plug it in. Free-minded, open-minded, uh, Gorov. I think you just, you're, you're close, right? Like a free-minded, I get it, but we usually say open-minded. Uh, let's see, <laughs> get some interesting answers. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, let JB says, me, stupid, rude, naughty, lazily, easily bored. Wow, well, welcome to the club, JB. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Well-educated, nice one. Okay, so smart, well-educated, kind-hearted. So some people are posting some, some vocab in the chat. Copy some of that. And if you don't know what they're posting, copy it down because I might not be able to talk about all of them. I'll try to go through them. Um, but hard-headed, interesting. Darwin's got a good one. Hard-headed. Uh, I might even use that one for myself. Uh, like Kind of like a stubborn, right? So if you wanted to use that. So stubborn. Stubborn sounds like you, you don't listen to other people's opinions, right? And hard-headed would be the same way. So nice one. Nice one there, Darwin. Uh, hard-headed is another way to say stubborn. And it's a little bit more advanced. So if you're using this kind of vocabulary, you kind of sound better in English because you're using, well, hard-headed doesn't happen all the time. We usually use stubborn. But hard-headed would, would definitely get you some points if you were doing a test. And you say, oh, that man's a pig-headed man or a hard-headed man. You, the examiner might go, oh, oh, where did you get that from? It's pretty nice. Uh, let's see what else we got. Extroverted, okay? So somebody who introverted, shy, not so talkative. Extroverted, the opposite. Loves to talk to people, never shy, always looking to talk. Uh, JB's got some Donald Trump going. Yeah, okay. Arrogant, sure. Arrogant means too confident, right? Uh, Self-important. Hmm. I don't know. Self-centered, maybe? Maybe JB? Uh, I don't know if we would use self-important. Self-centered. Uh, selfish, sure. Greedy, ridiculous, yeah, agreed, agreed, agreed. Uh, when I was younger, good looking, Gertrudis, I'm sure you still got it, Gertrudis, I'm sure you do. Uh, little talented, I interesting combination, uh, Gorov here. Little talented, May hmm, that's an interesting one. A little, I mean, that's very creative of you, right? Like, I, I don't think I've ever heard that before, but it, of course, I, when you say it, I understand what it means. So, in some of these situations, you can create. But if you're ever doing a test, if you're doing an IELTS or an FCE or something like that, I would say keep the creativity to a minimum during those tests. But it's an interesting one. I like it. A uh, little talented. Um, what else? we got self-confident. Okay, lots of confidence. There we go. Nice combination. Self-confident. So let's add that one because that's a good one. So like I said, when somebody puts something in there, check it out. Check out what it means because you can learn something from me and you can learn something from everybody in that chat. Uh, so confident. Awesome. Nice two-worded one there. Okay, so we got some people jumping ahead to Donald Trump. Of course, who doesn't want to talk about Trump these days? You know the whole government, the American government was shut down? They had this problem where the Democrats and the Republicans were fighting about, you know, about some, something on immigration and allowing, you know, certain people who've been in the U.S. for a long time. And they shut the whole bloody government down. So I think it's back up now and they negotiated, but it's just America, man. America. What's happened to America? That's what I'd like to know. Um, okay. Back to the task at hand. So, all right. Let's go to Trump because everybody's probably talking about Trump already. Uh, Donald Trump. What else we got? Idealistic, maybe. I don't know if that's about Trump, but that's okay. Idealistic, meaning you have some perfect idea. You have an idea about the way society should be. Like, society should be this way. City should be this way. Very idealistic. Uh, Bad-tempered. Good. Bad tempered is a good one. Okay. Uh, what else we got here? Donald Trump, dishonest. Yeah, I agree, JB. Probably dishonest. He does lie a lot, a ridiculous amount. 
I think they did it in one of those talk shows where they talk about how many times somebody lied and you compared like Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And it was ridiculous, like Donald Trump just lied about basically everything. Uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, good looking, yes, that is a collocation, right? So even good looking, I'm sure you're not talking about Donald Trump, not with that, that squirrel he wears on his head, but I'll just put it in this category here, good looking. So even that, even that word is a, is a two word adjective, right? And we'll look at a little bit of how you make two word adjectives. All right. Oh, my t teacher's in here. Oh, let's skip that one. Let's just get rid of that. Let's just go for parents. Okay, let's do the next one here. I don't need you guys talking about me. I get, a, I get enough grief at my work from my, the other co-workers, so let's not talk about me. Let's talk about your parents. Uh, <laughs> Orange American, Miss Randier. That's a very, that's a very Tolkienish name. Um, okay, so we'll tell me. Okay, there we go. Parents. Let's talk about mommy and daddy. Reliable. Good word. Reliable. Dependable is another way you could say reliable, right? Okay. Get my spelling right. Good. What else? What else can we say about mama e papa? Uh, clever. Okay. Good word. So clever, you know, kind of that not smart from school, but smart from maybe experience or this kind of thing. So smart in an unusual way, almost a sneaky way, right? Like kind of a tricky a tricky way uh, clever considerate okay I'm gonna just read a few of these uh, Judas says harmonious I think you want harmonious like they're good together kind of thing like in harmony could be loving awesome patient hardworking okay so there even that one hardworking there's a two word two word adjective hardworking okay courageous brave supportive helpful lovable lovable <laughs> uh, honest Yes, not sure what language that is. Caring, yes. Adorable, yes. Uh, adorable is like that little, like, like babies are adorable, right? Like kind of like little kittens and puppies. Forthright, there's a good one. Okay, so there's another one for you. So kind of doing the right thing, I believe. Uh, okay, good, good, good. Uh, all that is good. Now let's go ahead and let's do a few more. And then we're going to, after we've done a few of these, we're going to jump into another list. And we're going to look at a whole bunch of words. And we're going to look at what they mean and how you can use them. Uh, nicely dressed. Ice is a, it's kind of a combination. So that's a, what you're using. A nicely dressed man. Yeah, I guess you could use it. He is nicely dressed. It's that combination. Yeah, you could use it as well, right? Hardworking, sloppy. That's a good word. Let's add that one. Let's add that one to the Trump category. It seems appropriate. Sloppy. Sloppy you can think about as messy. Um, if you were eating food and you had food everywhere, like a baby, babies are kind of sloppy. It's not their fault, they're learning, but babies are sloppy. Okay, so it's kind of like when you make a mess, usually with food or liquid or something like that. Uh, so Pilar says good manners. And another way you can say good manners, Pilar, is well mannered. So just sometimes we have a way in English where we can kind of make that make that a little bit faster well-mannered a well-mannered student a well-mannered person uh, plain looking oh nice that's a good one so plain looking meaning like regular right nothing special kind of ordinary average looking plain looking old-fashioned nice good good okay now they're coming in a lot right an old-fashioned person, an old-fashioned idea, an old-fashioned kitchen, whatever. Uh, open mind, talkative, handsome, yeah, all of those are good. Okay, cool, very nice. And let's see, what do we got here? Bisma, could you please explain the difference between a present participle adjective and a past participle adjective? Okay, well, I can do that. Uh, let's go with that. And I had my sheet here, but eh, I'm not really supposed to be using that one. So here's what we'll do. Oh, sure-footed, yeah, that'll work. Uh, sure-footed, let me add that one first before we jump into that. So sure-footed, it's difficult to use this one, we don't have a lot of situation, but a sure foot like uh, mountain goats are sure-footed, they don't fall, yeah, so sure-footed. So maybe you know somebody who like walks around on, can climb trees and stuff like that, that person would be sure-footed if they don't fall. So there we go. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead, let's jump into this and let's look at the different kinds. So. So if you're gonna, so the thing we're asking, Bismuth's got the question about present participle versus a past participle. Okay, so let's look at, uh, for example, let's go down here. So if you go down, scroll down to the bottom of your page here. I'm gonna get into some here. 
Uh, let's see, where are we here? OK, so here you can see this is the first part. This is just the regular adjectives, ed adjectives and ing adjectives, aggravated, amazed, amazing. And I've, I'm sure most of you guys know this, but if you say, I am aggravated, we use the ed to talk about uh, my feeling, or he is aggravated, we use it to talk about their feelings, OK? So it's to talk about feelings. But if I say this, this is aggravating, like this activity is aggravating, it's not about someone's feeling, it's about the act usually about the activity, like class is aggravating, homework is aggravating, but I feel, or I am, same, aggravated. OK, so let's go ahead here, and let's jump down here. OK, so uh, where am I looking at? So we got this, and I need my. Uh, do, 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 do. Here we go. Okay. So, uh, if you look at this one here, I'm just going to do this just to explain uh, Bisma's answer. So, good looking. So, looking is your present participle, right? Good looking, uh, strong looking, um, uh, mouth watering. There's another one. So, this is your present participle, okay? So, that's all it's saying. What's the difference between a present participle adjective? Uh, it's, it's an adjective. But the way they create the adjective is using an ing verb. That's why present, right? It is breaking, right? Sounds, we use that to say a present adjective. And then your, your past participle adjective would be, for example, uh, this one here. Because this is a past participle, right? Uh, he was recognized by someone. So it's like a passive sentence, but it's an adjective. Sometimes passive sentences, or sometimes past verbs and adjectives are very similar, right? So this is the only thing. So if you use a past par participle, it's like the verb, the ed verb, or the, or the past participle here, known, right? New, no, known. So it's the same thing. That's the only difference between those two. OK, so let's go through a few of these. So these ones, you, uh, you, know, I think you'll got, you guys will know most of these. But if you don't know them, feel free to use some of these today. Search a few of them while we're doing this chat and learn what they mean. But here's what we're really going to look at today, because we want you guys to sound a little bit more natural in English. And the best way to sound natural is to use more phrasal verbs and to use stuff like this, you know, these two word adjectives that are really popular. OK, so some of these you will know. Some of them, hopefully, they're new. Narrow minded. Another way to say narrow minded is close minded. And you should use the hyphen, close minded. And the opposite, of course, open minded. OK, so someone doesn't have, you know, if you travel, you are open minded usually. Right? You go to new places, you get new ideas, and you're like, oh, that's OK, that's OK, that's OK. But if you're narrow-minded, maybe you, you don't have the same idea. Maybe you have a, lim uh, a, less, a less open way of looking at something. Like, oh, I don't think that's good, that's wrong, this is correct. So sometimes we use that. So narrow-minded sounds like a bad thing. Uh, open-minded sounds like a good thing. You can also say closed-minded. If you say, and I know a lot of students have said this before, if you say single, single hyphen minded, that's different. That's not narrow-minded. Single-minded just means like you have one idea in your brain and you are focusing on that. So be careful. Single-minded is different from narrow-minded. Narrow is like this. That's what narrow means. Uh, next one, well-behaved. When I was in <laughs> when I was in high school, I might not have been well-behaved. Hopefully you were. Uh, well-behaved. Okay, so that's uh, well-behaved. Good manners. Good behavior. Ahmed. Good behavior. Because well is good, right? So you know. Um, he was a good student, or he spoke English well. So this is using an adverb and a past participle and creating a new adjective. Okay, so old-fashioned, okay, traditional. Densely populated, a lot of people in one area. So you could say there were a lot of people in the area, or boom, dense, it was densely populated. And that's the other thing. When you guys are using all these words, what's the verb that we often use with adjectives? He is. They are. Mm, she was. You use the be verb a lot. So just remember that. Whenever you guys are using uh, these adjectives or adverbs plus past participles or present participles or whatever, uh, we often use the be verb. You don't have to. There, of course, there's other verbs you can use as well. But uh, this, is, this is kind of what we normally do. So let's do a few more. <laughs> Short haired. Done. Uh, widely recognized. Everybody knows. So, for example, Shakira in Colombia is a widely rec is a widely recognized singer, right? Little Shakira shout out. Hips don't lie. Uh, high spirited, positive, well educated, self explanatory. 
uh, highly respected, you know, so everybody appreciates this person, everybody respects that person. Brightly lit. Um, okay, so you can see some of them are some of them are done with like well. We use well a lot. Well known, well educated, well behaved, well mannered, well spoken. Uh, Obama. Okay, so we use some of them a lot. High spirited, high strung. There's another one for you. Um, high strung means when you when you have a lot of stress, you kind of behave really quickly. Maybe almost like almost like erratically. You're just a little bit crazy. You're high strung. You are a high strung person. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, brightly lit, yeah. Absent-minded, good one. Forgetful, okay? So it's another way to say forgetful. Uh, brightly lit, a uh, brightly lit room. Uh, it's, it's literally just for lights. So you saw, you saw my stream before I forgot to turn on the lights. That wasn't brightly, a brightly lit room. So brightly lit means a lot of lights. That's it. Uh, Strong-willed, okay? Strong desires, stubborn, does not desist, does not, desist means stop, so does not stop. Strong-willed means you, you don't quit, you don't give up, you, you keep going, so a strong-willed person. Uh, Ahmed's got one, well-educated versus highly educated. Nah, not, not a noticeable difference, you know, if you, he is well-educated, he is highly educated. Highly, okay, fine, highly, highly sounds a little bit like more of an emphasis on Maybe different, like a high, really high level, like lot. It sounds like you know, oh, he's got a master's and a PhD and this other PhD. That's kind of what it sounds to me. And well educated would be a little bit more general if there's a bit of a difference there. He's a well educated man, um, but they both kind of connect to universities or you know, going to a lot of formal school. Uh, there you go, JB. The shopping mall is brightly lit. There we go. So people don't fall asleep and they spend more money. Highly can mean like a uh, master's PhD usually. Yeah, yeah, sounds about right. You got it, JB. Uh, okay, what another one? Miss Randier, great name. Why do we use, why do we use short-haired? <coughs> Take back. Okay, we'll come back. Uh, quick-witted. This is a good one. Intelligent, clever, fast at thinking, discovering things. A quick-witted person. Somebody who's able to make jokes really quickly could be quick-witted. Somebody who's really intelligent and can do things at a, at a high rate, quick-witted. Middle-aged, um, okay, that's another one. Kind-hearted, friendly, awesome. Okay, and now, and here we go, uh, and here's the one we were looking at before, uh, present participle, so not past participle, but now we're gonna look at the ing. So whenever it says present participle, it's probably talking about something with an ing. Good-looking. Okay, now you'll see sometimes people say good looking with the hyphen, and then sometimes they say nothing. So actually both are correct. I, I think if you put the hyphen, you're gonna be safe. So if you learn that it doesn't need a hyphen, then fine, that's okay. But if you do put a hyphen in this situation, it, it's kind of safe. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Mm, record breaking, sorry, long lasting, can survive a long time. Long lasting battery, long lasting life, a long lasting car. Record breaking, a record breaking concert. Uh, well to do, Judith, very nice one as well. A well to do person. Um, what else we got? Oprah is a strong, is a uh, Garima, a strong dash wheeled lady. Don't forget your articles, you got to use the A in there. Yes, JB, Canadians are quick witted, you got it. All of those work. A never ending lesson, maybe you've had that teacher, you're like, oh my god, when would this class end? Hopefully it's not this class. To, might have to quit my job and go do something else. Uh, a never-ending day, right? Mondays, Mondays. You got, you got never-ending Mondays. You got never-ending, um, never-ending something. Something usually it's it's negative, right? You you want it to end, but it just never ends. So a never-ending day. A mouth-watering feast. A mouth-watering dinner. Um, here's an example. Jumanji 2 is a record-breaking hit. Yes, correct, Garima, you got it. Uh, Mr. Anders, is there any specific rule in choosing between adjectives and adverbs for two-word adjectives? Um, a rule? The rule is you have to know what it is. Like you cannot create your own, just say, oh, those two sound good together, that's great. Uh, it usually doesn't work that way. Uh, so normally you just have to learn the combination. Like we, o we don't say long-lasted, for example, we say long-lasting. So unfortunately you just have to learn that that adjective you know, this two-word adjective is correct, but the other one is not. So it's a combination. You are learning one, you are learning that you are learning one meaning for two words together, okay? So just 
uh, a mouth-watering meal. Okay, great. You have to say mouth-watering. You cannot say mouth-watered. You can't say mouth-waterable. You can't just create stuff. Uh, it's got to be mouth-watering. So just learn the combination and practice it a few times and then it'll be better. Uh, Long-lasting mascara. Yes, there we go. You've probably seen it on commercials before, right? Up to date, what kind of adjective is this? Yeah, it's just Ahmed, it's just a three word adjective. An up to date, mm, an up to date program, an up to date schedule. I don't know. It's just so sometimes, whenever we want to create an adjective just to make life easier, we just put the dashes, we put the hyphens, and we can kind of create one. Uh, let's do a few more. Uh, Mouth watering, thought provoking. This is a good one. You might use this for a book, right? A thought provoking book or a thought-provoking movie, thought-provoking idea, very nice. Slow-moving slow moving students, students move so slowly, they're kind of like puppies and you're trying to organize them, but they're so slow, you know, just when you walk somewhere. Slow-moving people, slow-moving, yeah, slow-moving something. Far-reaching, uh, far-reaching, what could I say, far-reaching, I don't know reaches far, goes further, you know, goes a long distance, a far-reaching idea, I guess it could be a far-reaching, mm, a far-reaching product, I don't know if the product goes from here to there, yeah, okay, anyways, uh, slow-moving movie, <laughs> yeah, sure, you could do it as well, right, you can kind of use it for your own situation sometimes, forward-thinking, okay, so a forward-thinking company, right, smart maybe, Ooh. Uh, thinking about the future, doing computers, right, thinking about the future of learning English, have you guys ever tried virtual reality before? Sorry, this is sidetrack, but virtual reality is amazing. And I played some video games where you literally, you know, you put on the goggles and these things would be shooting at you, these little machines that would move around. I could probably talk about this till the end of class. I'm gonna make it short. But it's the coolest thing ever. And you get the goggles and when something comes, it would go beep, 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 beep. And the, the bullet would actually slow down. So it gives you time to like go around it. It was the coolest thing ever. I think I, I need to buy this and just live inside of it. I think it would be great. And imagine what, what it's going to be like for learning English in the future. Oh my God, it's going to be crazy. You're going to be able to just put on a headset and you'll be able to interact with students from around the world and you can do these weird little handshakes. You know what I mean? It's going to be amazing. I'm going to be in there. I'm going to be in there so you guys can join me later. Once it becomes popular and awesome, there's going to be so many little games you can play. Virtual reality for learning for learning a second language is going to be ridiculous once once you know think about it in 10 years from now okay i'm done with that let's go back to this uh slow moving uh a slow moving part it just means this thing moves slowly so you're just kind of taking the grammar and you're reordering it apple there we go thank you judah thank you for giving me an example apple is a don't forget your articles a far-reaching company that works uh, cooking in uh, microwave. Don't forget your articles. I'll tell you one thing I always say to my students. This is a desk and these are desks and these are Brazilian students and those are Japanese students. In English you have to count everything. I know it's, it's probably easy to forget but always put your A with or an S or the or the with an S yeah, or my or his or her are there. You always got to do those things. Uh, last class was A <laughs> and there we go. So work on it you got to got to get those ones right cuz that's the thing you know if um if you guys ever decide to do a test in the future and you don't have the a and ands you could lose you could lose some points during that test for not having that stuff right so work on it make it a thing that everything you can see like hey that's that's a camera that's a computer you have to say ah 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 this is a cell phone an old cell phone um, these are headphones. Okay, so everything you can see, count it. A or S or the or S, right? Try it. Okay, almost there. And there's a lot more. I'm just kind of glancing. and We're kind of just burning through a few of these things. Uh, but there's a lot. Mm -hmm. That student was a slow moving. No, uh, Karam, because slow moving is an adjective. So you cannot say a slow moving. You can only say a slow moving student. You need student with the a and the adjective is slow moving. Um, heartwarming, a heartwarming movie. Uh, maybe some movies that have come out recently. Did you guys watch the Golden Globes? There were some interesting ones there. Uh, awe inspiring. Okay, you think of it, awe is awesome, right? Uh, so awe inspiring, uh, an awe inspiring di fireworks display, an awe inspiring. Uh, performance in the symphony, whatever, awe-inspiring, just creates awe, and you can think of awe as excitement. 
Life-changing experience, awesome, mm, good. And then some other ones, right? Ice cold, last minute, a last minute flight deal, a last minute sale, a full length movie, a world famous burger restaurant, which I went to the other day, which is amazing, fat free yogurt, all those things. Okay, and this one is actually a life changing speech. Very nice, that's good. Time saving techniques, good, very nice. Ooh, you guys are good. TV dinner, yes, TV dinner is a time saving food. Uh, can I share the link of the lesson one more time? Of course I can. Always happy to share links. And here we go. Tell me, JB, talk to me, buddy. What did I forget? It's impossible that I forgot anything on a Monday, so what, what did I forget? Okay. And, very important, mm, here. Last thing, I, I guess, oh, okay. Thank you, JB. Yes, please take that down. Please take down JB's advice. A jaw drop, but you got to finish that. A jaw dropping what? What would you say? A jaw dropping mm -hmm. scene from a movie? I don't know. Jaw dropping. You, it literally makes you drop your jaw. Okay, so that's what you should do. So whenever you say jaw dropping, you should open your jaw and look like that. Okay, so here's the one thing that I should teach you. This is important. Look at these here. Now this is the way they, ugh, JB, don't be naughty. Uh, this is the one thing that I should teach you uh, because it's kind of important about looking at both of these. So uh, look at this one here. What do we have here? First we have our article, which you should use. Adjective, two word, world famous, and then museum. So here you'll notice that there's a hyphen, okay? But look over here. Here, no hyphen. Why? Because we don't have, we don't have that noun after. We don't have the museum. The museum's over there, so it's just the be verb and then the adjective. And when you have it like that, you don't need to put the hyphen. So just keep that in mind. If you're ever reading and you see like this combination of words together, it is an adjective, but sometimes they don't put the hyphen. I think it would be better if they just put the hyphen all the time, just be clear. But anyway, so they just use it like this, and there might not be a hyphen. Okay, so just remember that. And there's a ton here. I'm, of course, I don't have time to go through all of this, but I attached this monster list for you so you guys can check it out. Uh, look at all the other examples. There's millions, there's millions, there's millions, right? Numbers. So there you go. That's an adjective, 65 year old man. It's a crazy adjective, but it is like an adjective because it modifies men. Okay, so read through that just to see. You don't have to learn it all. You don't have to study it. And some of it's gonna be crazy. Some of it will break the rules. It's gonna be annoying, uh, but whatever. It's there. it's there just for your reference so you can look at it. So let's go back. So now hopefully you've learned some new words from, from me and from everybody in the chat. Now it's your turn. So here's what you're gonna do with the last little bit of time. We got 20 minutes left. So I would like you guys to do just like I did in the warm-up activity. Um, just like in the warm-up activity, I would like you guys to choose a person or a thing and then you have to describe your person or thing with a one-word adjective and then a two-word adjective. And you know, focus on the two-word adjectives today because that's kind of what we were doing. Okay, so if I choose, I'll choose a, choose a topic just for the hell of it, but you guys should make your, make your own topic. So you can put like this, your person or thing, and then maybe like this. So if I say, uh, who do I want to talk about? Mm -hmm. What movies did I see recently? Um, that's a good movie. Mm. Let's just, do, okay, fine, Brad Pitt. Can only, I can only think about Brad Pitt so hot and sexy I couldn't get him out of my mind all right so here we go so I'm gonna talk about Brad Pitt so now I'm gonna use two things to describe uh, him one of them so I'll put Brad Pitt and then one word adjective I don't know uh, talented I think he's a pretty good actor I think most people would agree with that mm -hmm. and maybe quick-witted okay and maybe you can explain that idea so quick-witted and maybe I go here because uh, because his acting appears to have some improv in it. Okay, so this is what I could write. So that's what you guys can do. Uh, one person, one one-word adjective, and then one two-word adjective. Okay, so and tell us, maybe explain why, give us a little answer, because, because, because. Always good to hear the because. 
OK? Just like that. So choose a person. And if you want, I could probably give you a few extra ideas if you're not sure which person to use. But do it, try it yourself. Choose a famous person, uh, I don't know, maybe an actor or a singer or your parent or your boss, and try to use some combination of words that we learned today to talk about them. Okay, and we'll see what you guys can come up with. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So Ahmed's asking, so we only put the hyphen before a noun. Yeah, generally, generally. I, I, you can check it out and you know read some books and, and see how they do it. Do they always put the hyphen? I'm, I'm not too sure. But this is, this is the way I learned it is that if you have, if there's no noun, then you can just, you don't, if there's no noun, you need no hyphen. But if there's a noun, then you need the hyphen. Okay, hello Nala. How are you? Good. Doing some vocab building right now, so uh, join us if you want. We're trying to look at two-word adjectives. Can I make the writing bigger? Yes. Uh, this is this is the hard thing that I'm still working on figuring out here. I need to design my pages so we can so we can all see because my head's always in the way. What if I just what if I get rid of myself? What if I there? <laughs> now I'm gone. You can see me. No, you can't see me, but but that's okay. We can look at this a little bit. I'm still here. Don't worry. I'm I'm in your ear. Am I here every Monday, Nala? Yes, I am here every Monday. Uh, we do it. We work on grammar. We work on vocabulary. Yes, every Monday at 3.30 Vancouver time. So whatever the time it is for you, it's, uh, it's uh, one hour earlier. OK, guys, so okay, I'm going to come back here. I missed you guys. Uh, let, me get out of, let me get out of the way here. So give me some answers that you guys can put on here. Shakira, well known. I agree. Uh, OK, what else would you have here? Shakira, some famous singer. Hmm. What's that model's name from Brazil? Isabelle, something like that. So Brazilians, help me out. There's a famous model in Brazil. There's Shakira in Colombia. Give me someone who's famous, maybe from your country or someone you like internationally. Uh, Brad is widely recognized. Good. So uh, Ice, just add the A. Don't forget your A. Brad is a widely recognized man all over the world. Adriana Lima. Who, who is this here? I don't know who this is. What, what am I gonna what am I gonna find, Mithrandir, if I search Adriana Lima? I'm gonna find aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Pretty a Brazilian model. Okay, there we go. Pretty good looking. Gotta agree with you there. Okay. Uh, Turkish kebab is mouthwatering. I agree with you. It's good. Uh, do, 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 do. <coughs> okay. Who else we got? Let's get some famous people. Maybe I'll suggest a few, but uh, like I said, submit some ideas to me. Uh, who are some famous people that we could talk about? Mm, we talked about Trump. Bono, there we go. Let's go. Let's use Bono as an example. Intelligent, I agree. Definitely talented and uh, well known. You can, so here's an interesting one. You can say, has well known music. Or you can say is a well-known musician. So it depends depends which way you want to use it. Uh, so we can just I'll just use well-known because that's uh, that's easy. Okay, Celine Dion. Oh yay, Canada shout out Celine Dion. All right, let's throw her in. Celine Dion is talented. Yes, I agree. She is talented and a highly successful. Very nice, nice combination. So again, so you can see the some words well well known, and I need to learn how to spell well-known, well-dressed, that's another one, um, well-used, a well-used idiom, uh, highly, highly successful. So again, you can almost, almost, uh, I say that carefully, almost create your own, right? But some of them are good combinations, highly, success, highly successful, can't speak, you can also use that. Okay, Enrique Iglesias, an awesome singer, yes, I agree, he's pretty good. Uh, what else we got here? Adriana is a, is a world famous person. Okay. Well, and you say world famous person or a world famous model, right? Or a world famous actress or actor. Yeah, all of those work. Uh, ice cream is delicious and mouth watering. I agree. Both of those. Let's see. Let's, let's consult Mr. Internet. And while you guys are writing some sentences for me, uh, I'll try to find a few more. So let's see some two word, two word adjectives. Let's see what else we can get here. Because you can find a lot here as well. So let's see. Give me a list. Give me a big list. Lists are easier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do we got here? 
Justin Trudeau. Thank you, JB. You got it. Uh, is a bilingual and well-spoken politician. He, people seem to like Trudeau, right? And it, I guess it's not just because he's a sexy guy. He, he's he's uh, he's actually a nice. He's kind of a nice young guy, and he's not that old, right? How old is he? Must be Justin Trudeau. Let me show you a picture of Justin Trudeau, just so just so you know who he is. This is our this is our uh, prime minister in Canada. You can see he's a good-looking guy, right? kind of friendly right he's got some great hair that look is a little bit weird I'll be honest with you Justin but there we go see very prime ministerial yeah, looks like a nice guy people like him uh, I think Canadians generally like him that that goatee that's gotta go it's a good thing he got rid of that one and how old is this guy let's see so he there you go so you can tell me about him well how would you describe this person okay oh he's got some he's a good-looking guy and there he is with our buddy uh, hanging out with Trump. How dare you, Justin? How dare you? We know he doesn't like him. I'm sure he doesn't like him. Let's see how old Justin Trudeau is. 46 years old. Good looking guy. Not too bad, eh? Uh, all right, let's see what else we got here. Let's go back to you guys. Justin Trudeau, Messi, and Cristiano Ronaldo. All right, Ahmed, so give us, give us a few things. Uh, do, 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 do. Sean is handsome and kind hearted. You're right. He is, a, he is a handsome guy, isn't he? And he is a very kind guy, a li very loving guy. Stephen King, smart, happily married. Okay, nice combination, happily married. Uh, my daughter has a jubilant but quick tempered manner. Okay, interesting combination. Must be fun. Uh, this, this person, I'm sorry, Garima, I cannot pronounce his name is a well-renounced actress. Renounced, maybe not renounced. I think you want to say renowned. Uh, so, I believe this is the one we want, renowned. Can I use this? Let me check. Now sometimes I gotta Google stuff too. Renowned, I spelt it wrong of course. Yeah, renowned with a W, do, do, do. so renowned. This one is another way Whoops, come on. Well renowned. Renowned. Known or talked about by many famous people. A restaurant renowned for. Okay? And if you've never used sorry, I'm this is very small. But if you've never used it before, uh, start start using Google or another one, because this is the cool thing. They give you a lot of other options, right? So what's another way to say famous? You can say celebrated. What's another way to say famed or eminence, right? So you can and you can click on them and you can see them. And did we get the rule right? Yeah, there we go. So you can even see it there. A well-known, with the hyphen, television personality. Awesome. Okay, so always use, always Google stuff. I mean, you don't have to use Google. You can use whatever you want, but it'll help you to improve and give yourself a better range of vocabulary. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Let's go back. Uh, Middle-aged, yes, good one. Good one, Ken. Uh, Justin is a smart and good-looking guy. Perfect. Bill Gates is the richest and... Mm, maybe Bismar yours will be maybe most well renowned, and because w because you have man after you should put the hyphen with well renowned, the most well renowned man in the world. JB's f <laughs> JB's uh, crushing on J on Justin right now. Justin T is a firm bodied man. <laughs> yes, he is. It's uh, funny, buddy. You made me laugh. Uh, Chomsky is a smart and famous linguist. Yep, that works as well. Uh, Messi is a highly skilled, awesome, very nice, highly skilled football player. Highly skilled is correct, Ahmed, you got it. Highly skilled footballer, perfect, perfect combination. Okay, very nice. Hello, Ilyas, how are you doing? Um, all right, so we got those there. Any other? So let me, let me, let's look at a few more. Let me see if I can find a few more, which might be useful. What does this say? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is more of a slide. That's meh, it's kind of annoying. Just give me a list. That's all I want. Let's see what else we got here. Compound adjectives. So this is another word you might see them, right? Uh, so look at this one here. A man-eating alligator. There you go. Alligators eat, eat man, and so they're man-eating. I guess you could say person-eating now. Let's keep it equal. I'm sure they like men and women equally. They're both delicious. Okay, uh, good, good, pretty basic. Anyways, just give me, give me the ones. What else? Okay, here we go. Here's another one. A 20-story building. A 300 page book a well-known writer and you can see they all have the hyphen a work an eight-hour day so again even eight hour that's an adjective right there a five-second delay 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is not the best website in the world, but you get the idea, and you're using some of them today. Uh, what else we got here? Richard Gere is a talented and good-looking actor. I agree. He is good-looking, and he is talented. Uh, the student gave a high-spirited musical performance. Very nice. Yeah, there we go. High-spirited musical performance. Perfect. Uh, Man-eater alligator. Maybe women. Yes. Well, I'm sure they. I'm sure alligators don't discriminate between men and women. So I'm sure they eat both very happily. Okay. So I think that's what. That's mostly what I wanted to take you guys through today. Now let's see. I'm sure I, I usually have one more thing planned. No, so I think we'll just do a few more here because this is about all I got. Yes, short-term contract that would work as well, Ahmed. You got it. Let's see if we can find one more list while while we're cruising, cruising on the internet here. Uh, Two-word adjectives. Yeah, two-word adjectives. What else we got here? So again, you know, go to the, go to the internet and you can find you'll find way more examples on the internet. I gave you a few and I gave you you know some good ones which we use all the time, but. There's more. There's a lot more. So go to the internet and start looking, looking for a few of them, and you'll find a bunch more. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, this is the list. This is actually where I got one of my lists from. <laughs> okay, so this website, this grammar.com. Okay, so if you want to find some stuff, and this is, you know, some of the stuff we looked at before. I'll make that bigger. I won't spend much time on that, but okay, cross country skiing, full scale drawings, half inch measurement. Na 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 na. Okay, high volume, lots of stuff, lots of stuff to put uh, hyphens on as well. Uh, Elon Musk is a business magnet. Uh, just check your spelling, M-A-G-N-E-T, and co-founder of SpaceX, yes. Uh, are we talking about famous personalities? We're kind of talking about everything. We're kind of talking about any, anything. Anytime you want to use one of these adjectives, you can. Uh, so let's see, most famous, let's look at some of the most famous singers of all time. This is good. And let's go for images. Elvis Presley. All right, we got the king. Well, of course he's going to come up first. Uh, so there you go. You could, you could give me, uh, give me some adjectives to describe the king of pop, Michael Jackson. It's Paul McCartney, right? Yep. Uh, Paul McCartney, if you know him. Who is this man? <laughs> the king of ranchero music, of course. I don't know who this person is. Somebody know who this is? Is this? Uh, I love the rose though. It's a very, very sensitive man. Michael Jackson for you? Yeah, me too. I'm more of a Michael Jackson guy. Freddie Mercury. This guy, a little classic, a little Queen, right? A little classic rock. Tell me about Freddie Mercury. Uh, how would you describe him using some adjectives? This guy's pretty good. Bruno Mars. Uh, like some of his music. It's pretty good. Who else we got here? We got the King. Is a little bit old. Don't know who that guy is or why he's looking that. Look at, oh, here we go. Next among the greatest Punjabi singers of all time, Hans Raj Hans. Okay, there you go. Maybe he's famous right now. Maybe you guys should be checking him out. Uh, okay, that's getting a little weird. Frank Sinatra. Okay, so anyways, you know, Beyonce, great. So how would you describe one of these people? Uh, what, would you, what would be the adjectives you guys would use to describe any of them? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Michael Jackson is a plastic surgery loving man. Very well done. That's a beautiful combination, JV. You you have uh, you have done it again. You are you are. I think you're the highest in the class. You've got a three word combination: plastic surgery loving man. Yes, I agree. He did like his plastic surgery. He had some. You know, we had, we had black Michael, and we had white Michael, and we had the new nose Michael. It just it was he was all over the map. We didn't know didn't know what he didn't know what he was supposed to look like after a while. Elton John, very famous man. Uh, okay, and I think that's basically everything we can kind of look at from today. Okay, and the, the other thing, maybe we can do just a few of these um, here. Uh, do, 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 do. What's happening over here? Is everything okay in the chat? I see somebody said stop the live class. Does that mean you don't see me anymore? Is the time over? Are we not? Is it all gone? The video has stopped. Oh my goodness, what does that mean? How did the video stop? Let's check this out. What's going on over here? Have we run out of time? Hmm, that's weird. That's a weird. Can you guys can you guys still hear me or can you see me? Please give me give me some more details on what's happening right now if it's uh if it's not working right now. That's kind of weird. This never really happened before. Mm -hmm. Enya. Who is Enya? I'm not too sure. Okay, for me, no connection. Okay, for me, no connection. Mm, I'm not too sure, guys. I'm not too sure what's happening. If you can't see me, uh, I don't know if you can see the stream or if you can just hear me. 
But uh, anyways, see, we're I guess we're kind of close to time, so I'll I'll look into if, if there's a problem with the stream, I'll, I'll find out what it is. Uh, but for I think just for today, I think we've kind of gone through everything we wanted to talk about today. Uh, two word adjectives. So go out and your your homework assignment is to go out and learn some more two word adjectives because there are there are a lot of them out there. Problem connection. Okay, interesting. Sorry guys, if you um, if you can't hear me anymore, no. No, so now let me let me contact with you. See what's going on here. Am I talking to myself? Is it just me? Is it just us together? I'm not sure what's going on right now. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you can hear me. Well, that's good. Can you? Is there a video? Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's try this. Is there video? <laughs> now we can see it. Great. Good. <laughs> anyways, don't worry. We're, we're kind of almost done the class anyways. There's only three minutes left. And I think I've kind of done everything that I wanted to do with you guys. So here we are. You know, there's a big list of words there that I gave you. So if you don't know all of those, uh, check out a few of those. Um, and then the other thing we've gone through, the, the, these ones are kind of popular, but there's more out there, right? And I gave you that big list that you can scroll through, and there's a ton here. There you go. Uh, a midlife crisis. You know, when you buy that, that expensive car when you're like in the middle of your life because you need a change, that's called a midlife crisis. Uh, maybe you'll have one of those one day. Or a cat-like jumping ability. You can see I got some, some other ones in here. My head's always in the way. I'm going to work on that. So there we go. A cat-like jumping ability. Can you jump like a cat? Do you have a cat-like jumping ability? That would be awesome. Uh, okay, so again, you can see there's so much here. And uh, so anyways, whenever you see these, kind of think about it. Is, a, is it an adjective? Is it two words together? Or is it three words together? Like what was JB's winner today? Um, yeah, I can't remember what it was. It's up here somewhere. But anyways, this is all we were studying today, adjectives two word adjectives, three word adjectives. And you can see some of them are really crazy, right? 24, six inch long measurements, like just crazy long ones. And they're all adjectives. It's just a different way of doing it. Overexposed, here we go, this is a good one. Underrated, an underrated basketball team. Like you think they're very good, but people don't talk about them like they're very good. They are underrated. Uh, Self-confident, self-conscious, good, all those, okay? So that was pretty much what I wanted to go uh, through with you guys today. So start using these things because that's, the that's the real point here is that when you learn a, a two-word adjective or a three-word adjective, it might be a faster way to speak and it might make you sound a little bit more natural, right? Uh, if, you, if you say a bad-tempered, a bad I don't know, a bad-tempered teacher or a hard-working individual, it's just a... It's just a different way to say that person works hard, and it sounds a little bit more complicated because you're putting those two words together, okay? So we'll make you sound a little bit more natural in English using those, using phrasal verbs, and, and that, will, that will help overall, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, learning about adjectives and um, learning about all this awesome stuff in the world of English. We have survived Monday together. Well done. We're on our way. You are free, free to wake up free to go to bed, free to do whatever you want on a Monday and get through the rest of the week. I'll be back next week. And the other thing, remember your homework today is to check out this website. You can go there, you can download the app, you can see my face, you can see Kareem's face, and you can get involved with chat. There we go. So see, Kareem's already in. Kareem's everywhere. He's already in there. He's also in lots of people in the chat already. So you guys can connect with each other, keep in touch, you know what I mean? It's, it's always good to meet people and stay in contact, share some information with yourselves. Um, I don't know, keep practicing English if, if that's a good way for you to do it. So check out that website. It's free. That's your homework. I'm out of here. Have yourselves a great week. We'll see you next week. Same smart time, same smart place. Uh, have yourselves a wonderful week.